We have our first caller in the person of Suleiman from Yola in Adamawaste. Suleiman, welcome to the program. It is Democracy Day, and how is the celebration going on in Yola? If you are calling from Yola, of course you are from Adamawa. Can you reduce the volume of your TV set so that we can hear you properly, Suleiman? Hello. Okay, hello. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Yes, Suleiman. How is the celebration in Adamawa? Yeah. Well, as I rightly said, my name is Suleiman Ibrahim Suley. Yeah, the person that is rightly seated beside you by your little person by your right hand side is my younger brother. Oh, okay. okay. Mukhtar. Yeah, Mukhtar. Okay. Yeah, he's my younger brother. Is he making you proud? Uh, and I am, yeah, I and I am I am watching you now live and directing my panel. Okay. Yes. And the reason why I called to you know chip in about this democracy days, I had uh they are saying on twenty three or twenty five years of uninterrupted democracy. Mm. But if you look at it critically, what has that 25 or 23 years of uninterrupted democracy have provided for Nigerians? Big question. Virtually, virtually you will end up you know, concluding there is nothing to show on ground concerning you know, the, the Nigerian citizens. What benefits? have they gotten in all these 25 years of uninterrupted democracy? Okay. Are, are you, Suleiman, Suleiman, yeah. are you trying to say there is nothing? There is nothing except the infrastructure, the, the, the buildings. But come to think of it, what has the common man done in Nigeria? And in I, 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 want to, I, want to play, I want to play the devil's advocate here. You know that, okay. um, of course, from 2019 up to, you know, three or, yeah, two or three years back, Adamawa was one of the states, you know, heavily dealt with by the, by the Boko Haram, just like Borno and uh, uh, Yobi. Now you are, from, you are talking from the comfort of your room. Don't you think this is a cause for celebration? As, as the issue of this insecurity come to an end, no. I was I was able to 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 read one one article yesterday concerning people of Kankara in Katsina State yesterday. Mm. Fifty people were killed in a village. Fifty people were killed in a village. So also here in other we are still crippling with this issue of uh, kidnappings, armed banditry farmer had us clashes and the rest. So if you take the security issue, you know, and clearly you, know, you can there is there is nothing to talk about. Okay, then if you have your way. Uh, okay, if you have your way, because it appears that since morning we've all been lamenting, you know, on the streets, you know, uh, in the studios, you know almost everywhere in houses. What do you think we must do differently in order to reverse the ugly trend? Well, the first thing that we need to do is let the common man wise up and open his eyes and not begin to look at who are those leaders that can lead the country to a greater height. Who are those leaders that have the country at heart, not those who are willing to siphon or to divert the public funds for themselves and their family? This is number one what we need to what we need to do. Because most almost most of the people that are now becoming the leaders, they are not ready entirely to meet. All what they are after is is just how can they get in their hands into the national treasury or national coffers in order to go away with you know, the resources that is being you know, there? All right.
So number one, number one is we should, we should, we should, we begin, we should begin to change our mindset. Okay. There are people that have the zeal, the capacity, the know-how, knowledge on how to lead a Nigerian problem. But we are not giving them the chance, the opportunity, you know, to, to come and lead. All we right. are just following who give us this, who give us that. That is our major, major, major problem. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Suleiman, for calling, and uh, we appreciate your contribution. We have to have you some other day, and uh, happy Democracy Day. Um, Modibo, he said he's, he's your brother. Maybe you are from an extended family. Oh. Maybe by the time we are <laughs> done with the program, yes. he will call. I, I, I wanted to, to laugh, even though it's not a lie. Mm. matter. Mm. I saw the wife of the vice president you know, yes. using the <laughs> program of um, Event. events, events you know, to, to, so, to find herself. So Meaning there, there, there is no light in the, the um, um, Mala Hamza, the truth is, yeah, um, while, while we, you guys ha, are having the conversation, if you look at, um, like you said, this place is the safest place in the entire Nigeria because, I mean, As the, we speak now. Yeah, you've the got president, the president, the vice, the vice president, president, the senate, senate president, president, the speaker, speaker and every other person. Ambassador. Every other person is there. Mm. But one thing I want you to understand is I don't think, I don't think, I don't think there is any common man that knows what exactly, what exactly they are celebrating there. And that is a problem. Now, if the people that run that, they benefit from that democracy are not you know, happy or don't know what even they are in tune with with the celebration. Then I don't think that is a celebration. But I think Will what you we need to do that they should all remain in their houses crying. No, or so, they should so, be in churches and mosques praying. So, so or I think be... no. You know, I don't think God is willing to even do anything about us for now. <laughs> Maybe for yes, <laughs> but no. God is always there for us. No, yeah, yeah. Pray, so, so Malam, you know? the thing yes. is, we have been you, trained. Like you are also, you are also no, frustrated. No, my own, my own thing is, we've got pastors, we've got imams, we've got everybody lead some part of. And this what thing. you are trying to say they is that uh, God has given us all what it takes. It takes to all solve we the need problems. to do now is to remove selfishness, right, and bring that togetherness and then move the country forward, right? Let's bring strategies that can move us but forward. But who will bring these strategies? And what that is the people. And that's why I said now it's not about prayer. It's like Mukhtar yes. wants to chief is something. I, I agree with him. I don't think God is ready to do anything about us right now. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Let I me tell you why. Yeah, no, do you know why? Do you know why I want to go? You know why? If you pray, without, and that without, is why even in the United States, you see, they say... Uh, without even trying to... I think to, their, their slogan is... Um, Malamza, without, yes. without turning this into a, 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 religious, a religious program, yes. without, I'll just make one line. I'm a Muslim, and I'll quote a verse in the Quran where Allah said, it does not change a thing about the people until they are willing to change what is within themselves. So, and even in Surah Al-Najim, where he said, well, he said that a man, a man will not get anything except what he has worked for. So, the point I'm trying to make is, as much as we will pray, yes, so we pray. Mm -hmm. I agree. Let's pray. But if we don't put in the deliberate efforts, because God cannot create it out of abstraction, out of abstraction. When we create policies that are supposed to work, then there will be blessing on it. When we create structures and systems that are supposed to work, then it's like me saying, um, I, I don't have a job. I refuse to intend to get working experience so that at least I can have something that somebody can look at and say, you've put in you effort. You are marketable. Yeah, you, you are marketable. Yes. So that at least you God can create the access for me to meet the people that will see those, if we're going to be religious, if we're going to go a tad religious. But the point I'm trying to make for, for each and every one of us here is that if we do not do anything, that popular adage when we're growing up, everyone helps those who help, them, who help themselves. It's always going to be the reality. Nothing can change if we're not willing to change anything. If we don't, be, we cannot. According to Isaac Newton, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. All right, we have a second caller in the person of Nahiru from Bochi. Nahiru, welcome to the program and happy yeah. Democracy Day. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning to you, and um, let's have your take on Democracy Day. Yes, sir. I have been following your discussion. Okay. And like uh, what the previous caller said, I don't think as a leader, uh, there's something you celebrate. You also agree there's something you celebrate. 
Yes, it's the followers that are supposed to celebrate. But if, if you are if you are watching as we speak now, you can see at the at the Eagle Square some young people. You know, they are now doing a lot of acrobatics and uh, uh, display to to entertain the the guests. Oh, okay, anyway, uh, here in the studio they say these guys were paid like said, to do it. But like you said, they are entertainers and they have been paid for. So it's all from the bottom of their heart. Yes, <laughs> this is just an added they, they, they said that, they said that uh, in, in certain parts of Nigeria, uh, if somebody dies and uh, the family, they are not willing to cry, mm. you know, and it's time to um, bury him. That they can, there are some people who you recruit. They will now come and roll on the ground, yes, cry, wait, wait, and all that. <laughs> wait, <laughs> okay, now let's hear you. So it, how how, how can we get masses, it right? Is the masses that are supposed to be celebrating democracy for over 25? Yes. What can you show on the ground that has changed the life of Nigerian masses? Still, I want to play that the devil's the advocate, Nahiru. I know on 26th July 2019, there was a jailbreak in Bauchi by the yes. Boko Haram. Bauchi, yeah. Bauchi wouldn't have been the same, even though maybe for the intervention of the military, the commitment of the political leaders, and all that. And now you are talking from the comfort of your room, and uh, you are condemning the whole 25 years. Is that fair assessment? No, it's not that I'm condemning the whole of the 25 years, but uh, if I can say maybe 80%. Okay. Because it's not uh, infrastructure that matters, but the living of the people. Mm. Look at what the government is saying now about minimum wage. Mm. President promised he will give a living wage. And today, what's the price of a bag of rice? Can this living wage buy maybe two bags of rice, a gallon of uh, uh, oil, all these things, inflation is becoming high every day. So what can we do? What, okay. can, you, what can we do? You as a citizen, uh, what can you contribute? The governor in Bauchi, what do you think he should do differently? Your members of the National anti Assembly, what do you think they should do yeah, separately? You, yeah, you, you talk about my point. Because most of the problem we had in this country is our state assemblies and national assemblies. They are just like rubber stamp by the governors and the president. Okay. I did mean they are doing what they are supposed to do. All okay. these uh, things that we have been in, they are the ones to check with the executive. And instead, it is the executive that plant all these uh, legislative members. That's why they are just following their uh, whatever they wish. Okay. Even the the what they're supposed to do to government that will, that will, that will be to them. Okay, finally, so just yes, finally what, Nahiru, to do. what about, what about okay. the, the president? Should he uh, reshuffle the cabinet? And uh, what, the, what people do you think the, he should bring on board to help him, if you agree that uh, he should reshuffle the cabinet? Well, reshuffling the cabinet, that one is a different thing, because... Is his own voice also that he will bring. Whatever he wants is what they will tell him to do. The advisors, they are not advising him on the right way. So I think it is the policy that the government needs to change. The policy. Okay, the thank you very much. The policy is our problem. All right. We well, thank you very much for calling, Dahiru. And uh, happy Democracy Day to you, people in Bauchi and Nigerians at large. You, you, you had him. It's like you are enjoying the... No, no, <laughs> not enjoying the enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, it's surprising how, how all of them are exactly there, happy, you know, happy about. Maybe, I don't know what they're thinking. So I... I I'm, I'm saying, really, that, you know, the, the, the whole world uh, agree that um, Nigeri Nigerians are happy people. We try to um, make ourselves happy, even yes. though... But Malam Hamza, are you happy now? Happy. Are you happy? I, I want to say that I am happy because mm. number one, I have job. No. Number two, I am healthy. No. And then uh, number three, 
I think they are a semblance of peace mm. where, where, where I live and I, I'm mm. contributing to, um, mm. you know, shaping the mm. democratic but discourse. Is and this I'm what you, sure. Is this what you imagine to see? No, 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 no. I, I think we deserve uh, better. better, yes. And that is why we are having this conversation mm. to now, instead of continuing to, to lament. Mm. For instance, what do, what do you think um, the, the president should do. And I think that this is how we should tailor the conversation mm. uh, as we approach um, the, mm. the, the end of the program. Mm. Um, what do you think the president should do in specific terms? So, so from me, mm. from me, we'll hold heartedly, I think some people within the ministry, within, within, within the government, they need to be that resheffulment. Some people that have no expertise, no experience and are not willing to learn. I will be willing to mention this. Yes, I, 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 definitely. I mean, I think the entire Ministry of Defense yes. need to go because I mean... And when you talk are, about the entire Ministry so, of Defense, so you're I mean, about... I mean, I mean, the Minister of Defense, the Senior Minister of Defense, the Junior Minister of Defense, that's the these former are, governor of... These, yes. are, these are governors. Yes, the former right. governor of Jigawa and the former of governor, governor of um, 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 Zamfara. Zamfara. Why am but I But you know that this? governor of Jigawa, you know the role he played? It, yeah, so of, it's not the, the about the role. Of, uh, Malam Hamza, uh, uh, Malam Hamza. Uh, I don't think you work for... The, you know, campaign DG for the Northwest. And so I think you work for trust. You yes. don't work for government. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I, so the reality... I don't have anybody from the government. And yes, uh, so I don't want government to, 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 to see feel, me as someone who yes, is actually yes. fueling the... Yes, the, but, but Malam Hamza, if yes. you look at defense, yes. when we're talking about defense, we're talking about bringing strategy, bringing mechanism, bringing agility or boosting morale have they of military. That? So what I'm saying is it needs someone that has technical know-how and experience to manage this office and to man the office. Look at their, their, their past antecedent. Look at their past work. That is the governor. He used to be a transporter. He used to so manage if you have business. Your way, what what do you I recommend? Do. If I have my yes. way, I will recommend the removal of the uh, junior minister. All right? Because I don't think he belongs to any ministry, if you ask me. The senior minister, I think he might be fit in maybe Ministry of Transport. Because, because that is his area of yeah, That's his areas of expertise. And that is a place where if something is being brought, it will work. And I will align myself with what we, he said about Ministry of Power. The ministry requires someone that have technical know-how, that understand the system, that can also say that play an optimal performance that will bring investors to really invest in that. And if we move on, you see the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs that have been having issues. I think if that ministry cannot be moved as a department the way it is before, right, having it I to be it controlled... because of the yeah. humongous nature of... Thank you. Having it controlled by the right. Minister of um, um, Finance and then the Coordinating Minister of Economy, I think the work is too much on Wale Odun. If we can have a minister in that ministry, it will go a long way in helping. And another thing, right? The biggest thing is I want to see consequences in governance. In to say that someone was indicted to say that person has done this and done this and done this and the president owed that investigation. Can we use that person as a scapegoat? If truly that thing she did... Um, um, turn out to be true. What is the punishment so that others will see? Now we are hanging. Okay, we, we, I will. We, I will credit you. The the just to, yes. to to hold on briefly while we pick another caller from Ben said in the person of Matthew. Yeah, Matthew, welcome to the program. Happy Democracy Day. And what do you have for the program? Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I, I honestly want to appreciate uh, these two guys in the studio. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a journalist as well. And, uh, yes, I really appreciate the fact that you always want to be play the devil advocate. Uh, Mukhtar and uh, Modibo, right? Yes. Kudos to you guys. Mukhtar Suleiman and Mukhtar Modibo, yes. Yes, kudos to you guys. Uh, just like I said earlier, I'm a Commendation well. from Machi. You know, yes. Um, yes. Um, Modibo, I think, mentioned something. Yes. When, when we were talking about prayers, he said he's not uh, a, a Christian. I mean, I'm talking about Muta. Yes. He, he mentioned something uh, from the church, you know, that if we can revert, I mean, if we can practice such things, it might help. And uh, we, were, we were talking about prayers. Honestly, let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, I think God is not ready to help us now. It's not as if God doesn't work. Oh, my God. Uh, work. You, you, too. And, uh, you actually... 
Modibo said something. Mm. He quoted from the Quran. Mm. And I want to quote from I the Bible. It's Suleiman. It's actually a, Muqtah Suleiman who quoted your verse. Please, yes. hold on. There's a place, there's a, there's a part in the Bible, there's a, chap, a verse in the Bible that says, faith without work is dead. I believe, I don't totally believe in, it's, it's not as if I don't believe in prayers. I believe in divinity, yes. But sometimes there are works that we need to do. There are some work, certain works that we need to do without bringing God into the picture. God has practically given us everything. Okay. Manners do not fall for, fall for heaven these days. And even if they fall, they ain't going to fall on your lap. They're going to fall far away from you. You have to go to leave, have to go to leave your comfort zone to go and pick it. Hmm. You, yeah, these guys here are remarkable. These are the kind of guys we need. Modibo and uh, Mokhtar, right? Yes, Suleiman, yes. And, All right. Uh, when, when we have people, young people like that, you're talking about uh, the way forward. These are the kind of guys we need. All right. Thank you very much. These are the kind of guys we need. All Thank right, you very much. much. You guys are, are wonderful. Thank and, you. Uh, well, I'm not happy about the democracy anyway, but happy to the democracy day to you. And uh, please, the presenter. All right. Uh, Thank no you very feelings. much. I'm a journalist. No hard feelings. I'm a journalist, but I'd rather... I have no option, yeah, but to remain neutral, yeah, of course. Opinion. All right. Please. Thank, Thank you very much, much um, for calling, so, uh, Matthew. So, so, from, like yes. I was saying, yes. um, 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 thank you, Matthew. But um, another thing is, let's see the consequences. Um, and let's read so you are now actually questioning the integrity of yes. the proof of uh, better edu. Yes, well, so what I'm saying suspended. is... suspended. Yes. Nothing, Nothing happened high. again. Yes. No minister in that. There yes. is a serious law. I mean, so... And so, there is a budget to be implemented. Yeah, okay. That's what we're saying. So can we see if it's... Did something happen, really happen? Can we see the consequences? You know, this is what happened in the National Assembly. The um, Ab Abdul Ningi was suspended because he violated some level of Allegedly. standing rule. Allegedly. Uh, yeah. No, he violated a standing rule in the House. That's why he was suspended. It's not he, alleged, he alleged that there was a, 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 fraction. A, a fraction on the budget. That is the allegement he did. Yeah. But this one we're talking about is he violated... A standing rule in the house and that's why he was suspended guess what no. the suspension did not get to its no. logical conclusion then the same people that suspended him call him back to say come back we are forgiving you so that means it's it's a rule of uh, forgiveness it, they can forgive and whether him. whether whether the allegations he made were true, were, were true or not, they or are, not they're immaterial now they're immaterial now so the people you said it here that bringing out that new national anthem was to just shift people from that that point of asking question about yes. this i might likely say it's true so what i'm saying is can we bring policies that can work and can we bring the drivers of the policies okay. you know to work reshufflement is something that should be done okay fine I, you will say more on this but i we will pick a caller the first lady to call yes in the person of mariam from yola in Adam also. Mariam, welcome to the program. Jack Bama. Yes, good morning. Yes. Uh, I want to start by sending my regards to Mokhtar in the middle. Okay. I'm a friend to his wife and also he's my friend too. Oh, Mokhtar. Uh, so Mokhtar, are you from Adama? <laughs> he's from Adama. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, knows, the first knows, caller actually said that uh, uh, Mokhtar is his uh, brother. And who is Mokhtar to you? A friend? Yeah, I'm a friend with his wife, and he's also my brother, too. That's how I would say, yeah. All yeah. right, all right. Okay, <laughs> happy Democracy Day. Well, Democracy <laughs> Day is here. It's just the date that seems familiar, but believe me, there's nothing to celebrate. Hmm. Because I'm watching live, and I see some people dancing at the Eagle Square. Seriously, yeah. like, it's... I find this somehow fake because these people are not celebrating from the bottom of their heart. How, like how do you know, Maria? Look they're at they're how they're how gorgeously you know. dressed they are. Uh, he's gorgeously dressed now. You know, some something that is fake is always beautiful. <laughs> this is a sound bite. Well, <laughs> I must say, I must say that democracy in Nigeria is being bastardized because there is nothing. There is nothing we benefited. I think I was born 1993, August. Since mm. I was born, things have been going backward instead of becoming easier. I'm a married woman with two children. Believe me, it's been very hard for me. 
Uh-oh. to watch my husband go out, give back stories. People are suffering. Uh-oh. Inflation everywhere. Commodities are no longer affordable to a common man. What is there to celebrate? Democracy that has been nothing but hardship to the people? Sad. But then, like, seriously, okay, well then what do you think we should do think differently? Yes, what do you think mm-hmm. we should do differently, Maria? Is it to change the uh, uh, nature of our democratic governance? Uh, is it about leadership or is it about followership? Where is the problem? The problem is from the followership. I must say that because without the voters, there won't be a leader. Okay. Right? So... Our people are brainwashed whenever election is near. This, all these campaigns and, 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 and everything is, is, is a lie. We, it, it used to be proof to be lies. Because when election approaches, they come over during campaigns, manifestos, they say a lot of things, made a lot of promises. But at the end of the day, you will see that we are just being deceived. It's just the same set of people who come back another time and, you know, there's nothing to celebrate. Honestly, I think I believe your earlier caller, Mr. Suleiman, who says that he's a brother to Muktar, and now I'm his sister. So, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, happy democracy. We All are right, thank you very we much. We cannot say anything. All right, thank you, Mariam, for calling. And um, we hope those in the Ugur Square are watching also. <laughs> and then watch? Nigerians <laughs> yeah, are watching so that we can collectively salvage our dear country. We don't have any other country we don't. other than Nigeria. Mukhtar, I want you to now come in. Mariam raised uh, the, the issue of uh, gullibility of um, the, the, the electorate. Do, do you agree? You see, there is a chicken and egg conversation around which one comes first between the leadership and the followership. Which one of them should actually be fixed first? Mm. But for me, I think the system of government that we've run for as long as we have run this democracy it is not so much as a democracy, but as much as the weaponization of poverty. Weaponization of yes, poverty. Yes, we've weaponized poverty so much as a country that during the campaigns, when, 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 we, when the, the leaders already understand that the people are hungry mm. and that people are willing to sell, people don't understand the power of a vote. It is very difficult. And the more and more you try as much as possible to see how you can educate the populace, the more there is thwarting efforts toward toward that. So you cannot uh, expect democracy to thrive in a politically illiterate society. It's not possible. It's very, very <laughs> difficult. So because people do not understand what democracy means and what a vote means and how a vote can mean can be the difference mm. between who wins and who loses an election. And I'm hoping that we have seen that in the last general elections. It's why in most for in whatever fora I have the opportunity to speak. I always speak, talk to people who are working around governance and accountability, and I say, show people the statistics of the last election. Make them see and make them understand how it is that the accumulation of the two opposition votes mm. were more than the votes of the president who won. This is to show you that democracy is a game of numbers. So if you don't have the number, you won't win an election. If you don't come out to contribute your quota to that number, mm. Imagine um, 90 million registered voters yes. and only 28% of that number, according to the Beavers um, and data that came yes. from INEC. It makes you also want to question the statistics of previous elections as well. Because if you look at previous elections, we've had 30-something percent, but we've not had as much overwhelming turnout physically mm. that you ca- could see, like the last general elections. But the, yet, the last are, general are, elections are, are, are fewer. Yeah, the point I'm trying to make is that it makes me want to question the credibility of the previous elections. Because if, you, you know, you can't ask me to trust your statistics more than my eyes. We saw overwhelming turnout in the last general elections. Mm. Everybody saw it. People who have never voted, just like 2015, people who have never voted in their life wanted to go and vote, and a host of so many things. There was a new wave of voters. The uh, people who just clocked 18, a lot of people went to vote. And yet, that was just 28% of the total people who were, who were uh, registered to vote. So I think we, we need to also look at the systems and structures that bring these people into place. Which brings me to the last conversation, continuing from the last conversation where Modibo um, um, was speaking before, earlier, which is what do we need to do to fix the governance structures? I think we need to start making government un- un- unattractive to money mongers. 
and we need to stop but rewarding. what can we do do you have we, the magic wand yes i don't think we have a magic wand i think there's a lot of hard work that needs to go into that we need to make it more unattractive to money mongers by cutting down on the finances finance financial aspects and then secondly we need to put okay, before place... you mention the second point sorry to interrupt you because mm. we have another caller okay um so as not to miss him from abuja uh welcome to the program okay are you hello uh, are you with me Yes, very well. Welcome to the program and happy Democracy Day. Ah, the same here, my brother. All right. I, I greet all of you very well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I, what I'm trying to contribute is this. Yes. And what I want to say is that, what are we celebrating? Don't you think there is something to celebrate? <laughs> The only thing I can see that we are celebrating, we are celebrating the life God gave to us. If, if you are by your TV set, you can see the president, the vice president, uh, you know, service chief. We are not chief. celebrating it. We are, not, we are nothing to celebrate. You know, you and I know that we are, to, we are nothing to celebrate. Hmm. We are only celebrating the life Almighty God gave to us. I want to say, what happened to our intellectual men that we have scattered all over the world that would have come together to bring this nation to a power nation? At times I ask myself, what is going on in Nigeria? Does it mean that we can't get it right? Because for me, I, what I see that we are celebrating is corruption. We are not celebrating democracy. The people you saw there at that evil square, they are always pretending. The point is celebrating. Go there and ask some of them, they are not eating. <laughs> they are thirsty, they are not eating. But they are doing it just what they are doing. They are doing it for money's sake. Maybe the little money that we have in their pocket to go home and feed their families. They are not celebrating. Are you hearing me, my brother? Very well, let very well, you. yeah. Let me be sincere with you. They put it today. We go to Mandela, even Mandela's grave to, to, to celebrate Mandela. Is it not an African? Does it mean that we cannot have one people that can sacrifice for this nation? If in this, in this Africa, you can count Nigeria is one of the fastest players with abundance of resources and human resources. But set of people choose to bastardize this. Politicize this? What is going on? We should never accept the truth. Tulumbu should give us, if I'm to say, he should give us the agenda, not to give us all promises. If it's only one agenda, he should give it our first and concentrate on that one agenda. Security, he should deal with security. If it's something of power, he should deal with power. If it's something of education, he should deal with education. And not empty promises. We are tired of hearing since I was born. Listen, I know my age now. I'm a grandfather. All right. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Are you hearing me? Very I well. Be, I've been hearing, and, uh, uh, listen, uh, this, uh, no, okay, they, they went and rushed to, um, to assign a, 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 a national anthem. What is it for? What are we doing? Is it the, the, the uh, organized labor that we have been uh, grammaring for a minimum wage? Is it, at least they should tackle that one first before the national anthem. All right. We should do the right. We should do. We should do the needful now. We should try and do the needful and forget beating the push. God okay. has blessed this nation. Use what God gives to us and the, and do the do the needful. We don't need to go outside begging all countries to come and invest in Nigeria. The ones that are invested, they are pulling out and going out to other countries. Hmm. Yes? Put your that? country in order and the investors will come. That is for me. That is what I see. When you put this country in order, everything that is there to listen, whatever it takes for other countries to come and beg us to invest here, we have it on ground here. Mm. But we are deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. Okay. You, you want to you want to be richer than the whole. All right. So but, people will come and beg them before you know it's unfair now. All right. Thank you, you very much. And and I believe that everybody will celebrate you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We pray that next year, around this time, when you call, you will have cause to celebrate. He said he, he is a grandfather. Yes, Suleiman, you are saying something earlier, and uh, I want you to continue. But um, the last caller said he, he is a grandfather. He's not happy. There is deception. We are, we are corrupt. We are not getting it right. Um, uh, investors are going out of the country. But from the speech of the president on, on many er uh, areas, he made mention that this suffering will not last till well, we, 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 we announced yesterday that they are going. 
Interesting. Yes, Guinness, yeah, they announced. Guinness, they, they have, we have, been, they have, we have, they been have hearing, divested uh, over 50% of their shares. We've, we, we've, we've been hearing that the suffering will not last since, I can, as long as I can remember, not just even President Tinibu have started that narrative. It has been a resounding narrative long before President Tinibu. And I think that is sad. And I've always said, whenever I hear this, would be, it is one thing for the political class to tell us to adjust. Yes. It is another thing for them to tell us to adjust and then we are seeing them living La Vida Luca. We are seeing them spending 160 million naira on cars, telling us that the roads are deployable. For each, for each. Uh, yes, and somebody, somebody had the effrontery. We didn't even touch that of ministers. Somebody had the effrontery to say that the reason they have to buy SUVs is because the roads are deployable. Whose job is it to fix it? What, is, what are you doing with your constituency project money? So all of these things are things that we need to actually look inward toward. Like I said, Chapter 2 of the Constitution needs to be um, re-evaluated. We need to ensure that there's consequences when governments refuse or fail to meet because that is the criteria. That is its responsibility. But, but who, will, who, will, who will enforce the change? The people would enforce the change. You should more, call more for a so. referendum. Yes, you call for a referendum. Again, I don't think Nigerians, that's why I said democracy cannot thrive in a politically illiterate society. I don't think Nigerians understand the extent and limitations of their constitutional power. And because we've weaponized poverty for a very long time, we've, they've weaned us of our audacity. The political class has found a nuanced way to wean us of our audacity. So because of that, people are scared. Mm. To even do anything because they feel like if they are, ah, if you do this thing, hmm, now you sabio. People you know, are gullible. So many, not, not just even gullible. People are weak. People are because they are hungry. Not, yeah, because they are hungry and they know they, they feel powerless ultimately. And I think these are the things that we need to revive as a country. We need to find newer ways to ensure that people are empowered, people are educated to understand what their powers are, so that they can actually execute those powers. And another thing I would say is that Finally, not, yeah. no, nothing will change if we don't find a way to change things in 2027. But lastly, coming back to what I was saying earlier, yeah, finally. would be, yes, finally, we need to find a way to make governance or government unattractive to money mongers. And this would involve cutting down on the, expen the recurrent expenditures of government. That's on one side. Secondly, we need to ensure that, I don't know how we'll do it, whether it's a law, whether it's a policy, whether it's going to be a tradition. If you've been appointed as an appointive government, I know that the constitution gives you the power to run for office, to vote and be voted for. But that, that um, right should be restricted a little for a few years after you leave office. Because people see ministerial appointments as a stepping stone to go and to run for governors, governor, or senator, or president. All right. We, need to that. we have come to the end of the program. Yeah. We have less than one minute. I just want you to give like a big sound bite on the way forward. I think we need to imbibe the culture of check and balances. Everybody should be part of it. No, you are a governor or you are a former governor. Once if it falls on you, it falls on you and you have to abide by it. So we need to revisit our constitution and make it the constitution of the people, by the people and for the people. Thank you very much, uh, Mokhtar Modibo, Secretary General, follow the money, Africa. For your informed pastor, your sister and your <laughs> brother in your life, I think you have to call them after the, the program. A, lo a lot of uh, commendation for the two of you, mm. especially from Adam Awa. Mokhtar Suleiman, public commentator, Man of many, uh, <laughs> we thank you for coming and for your informed perspective and for helping us to shape the conversation of the democracy they celebrate. Thank you. And viewers, this is a wrap for this section of the program. We hope you found what we discussed really informative and uh, engaging. The program will continue in a moment from here. Bye bye for now. I am Hamza Idris and happy Democracy Day. <laughs>
Okay, MK or Abiola? Nineteen ninety two election. Nineteen ninety two. Who won the election? Presidential election or governor election? Presidential election. Nineteen ninety two. I that was very. Really, that was an old. Mm, unless maybe I go back and go and go go better. Uh, no, I was very small that. <laughs> so unless okay. I don't. Know. Who was the presidential candidate of the ANPP in Nigeria? ANPP, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, starting from when the democracy started, yes, or yes, when it started. You know, we about democracy, so I don't even know where you are going or something like that. But uh, the where you are asking me now, I don't know the answer. Who was the first presidential candidate of the ANPP in Nigeria? Uh, that should be MK or Abiola. What was the meaning of ANPP? ANPP. Well, something allows um, of something something. I know is <coughs> a. I know it's a party, mm. yeah, so but I, just party like that. You've gotten, hmm? The only party you've got to right. I know it's a party, just like that. Okay. Man, okay. no go far. ANPP. Uh, national, right? Nigerian National Democratic Party or something like that. Is it? Oh, ANPP. A okay, ANPP. Uh, What's the full meaning of ANPP? ANPP, all nation people. Okay, what are the colors of the people's democratic party? Democratic party, mm -hmm. the color. Mm -hmm. People's democratic party, like PDP. Yes. What? Uh, uh, I'm not a party member, something like that. Yeah, uh, their flag. Uh -huh. What was the color of their their flag? I know there is maybe there is red here and there is green here, yeah? so I don't know there are any other one. What are the colors of the People's Democratic Party? Uh, green, white, and red. PDP. PDP. I think green and white. I guess. Is it? One is correct. Okay. Uh, that is white or green. And uh, what was that color again? Forgot it. Green, white. Thanks.